Hey guys, Stephen here from littlerobot.ai. Today I'm gonna show you 10 ways that you can be using ChatGPT. Why they called it that, we will never know. But here's the thing, it's been around for a couple of months now. There are tons and tons and tons of videos out there that are showing you how you can make money with it, how you can optimize it. And I wanna show you just how to almost use it in your day-to-day -day life, whether you're a business owner, whether you work for a business. I was sat down with a friend yesterday and we were both discussing this and if we worked for someone else, you know, we both run our own businesses, but imagine how much more defined and focused your time can be. It is when you run your own business or not, but if you're working for someone, so say you're a marketing director or something along those lines, your output of work has suddenly increased dramatically. I just hope that the, your boss understands that and isn't just like, whoa, what's going on? So let's get into this and think about ways that we can be utilizing it in business and in your personal life. So I'm using the GPT-4 model here. I find that it has a far better success rate. Uh, not success rate, it's just a better replies. And let's put me in the corner as per usual and make me a little bit smaller, that's okay. But it's all in the prompt, okay? So for example, let's say you were, you know, whatever you're wanting to do. So I'm gonna show you how we can get this to be your your lawyer, your social media person, your your life coach, whatever you want it to do, it can effectively do. But let's get started with 10 little life hacks or, or ways to use it that you that you can utilize every single day. So number one use case is to summarize content. I find this really useful when you perhaps have news articles that you just kind of don't want to read all of it, but you wanna get a gist of what it's saying. But effectively, anything that you want to summarize, this can do. So let's just go on this tech news website. It's a little bit intense, I know, but I quite like it, I don't know why. And let's just find, there we go, uh, let's just find a random one. I don't know why I'm put, put why, I'm, why I'm choosing. Like, let's just pick this one, all right? So I'm just gonna, let's just put, should I do it all? Ah, let's just do this. I'll do this and I'll say, you are, again, all in the prompts, so I always tell this what it is. So I always like saying, you are a expert at summarizing content. Please summarize the following. And that's not a great prompt. Like that's a very, very simple, simple prompt but it allows you to focus down on exactly what you want this to do. If you just said, summarize this content, it may not produce the best summary. If you tell this, hey, you are a summarizing expert, like you're the best of the best, it will help. And there you go, it's put what, let's say this is maybe 500 words, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, into a, cup, a, a paragraph or two. And it's done it in a way which allows you to really, really easily read it. So again, if we think about business uses for this, you could be having content being summarized and this could be automatically put somewhere else. So if you had a Slack channel, for example, with all your team and you wanted to have a daily summarization of a news article or a, a piece of content, you know, maybe your clients write to you every Friday and you want your team to summarize that, you know, you could automate this with make and um, have the same sort of output. So that is sort of number one tip that I would always say, use this to summarize, it's super, super helpful. Number two, and I've done videos on this in the past, but I have to include it just because I think this is probably one of the biggest use cases of ChatGPT. And that is content creation. You know, you can get this to create anything from blog posts to social media posts to scripts. Uh, and that actually that's gonna be another one in itself, but let's just get this to write a blog. So you are an expert, I can't spell today, expert copywriter, write a 
short blog on how to run a marathon. It was the London Marathon this weekend, so hey, let's use that. Again, this isn't a great prompt. I'm just using this as examples of what you can do with it. You always wanna make these prompts better than I'm currently showing you. And maybe I can do a whole video on just prompts alone because it makes a huge difference. Again, this is just showing you examples of what you can do and it allows it to um, allows it to to do it so there we go it's creating a blog it does the intro it will probably do three or four points and then it will do a conclusion that's pretty much how it runs and if you want to make this longer so what i find is it typically within this framework it, it writes about 600 words and then you can just say write more write more so if you wanted to have a 3000 word blog you can just continue saying write more write more write more um Alternatively, of course, as I've said before, you can use OpenAI directly, tap in your API key, go into something like Make, go into something like, uh, uh, you know, a Google add-on tools and teach it exactly what you want to be creating, which will output more. Although this has put more than three, so that's a nice little change. It keeps me on my toes. But as you can see, it is cracking on right there. So let's move on to point number three, and this point I've already got open on the left here, and it's about creating images for socials, for your business, for selling. You know, you can sell this art, you could do so much with it. And that is using Midjourney, but using the ChatGPT to create your prompt. So I always say whenever I use Midjourney is I get ChatGPT to write a prompt for me. Okay, so let's just do a new one. Um, write a prompt for mid-journey to, to create a hyper-realistic dog with a red bow around his neck. All right, I don't know why, that's, why that is. Excuse my spelling, always... So oh, I didn't do I didn't do model four, but it was sort of boom. That was quick though, wasn't it? Jesus! Um, and then it gives you the prompt again. Then on mid journey, you add like v three, v four, v five, whatever version you want to use it. V five is obviously the most recent. Creates hyper hyper realistic images. Um, I'll probably do a video on that alone because I think it's very very useful. But again, utilize this to save your time. So point number four. Let's put it on here. If you need to have a contract, you know, say you're a small business owner, you work for yourself, even big businesses I know are already using this, but you want to create a simple, simple contract for services, goods, whatever the case may be, this will create you a perfectly legal and well-written contract. I have in the past paid for contracts to be written by lawyers, by professionals and you put these next to each other and there is literally no difference of course with this way you you might have to tweak certain details I would never take it just like copy and paste into that done always make sure that you are utilizing it and and checking it so you are a legal expert write a short and simple contract for a marketing agency to work to sell uh, Facebook advertisement managing management oh, I'm spelling is awful today sorry guys so there we go again 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 I'm gonna say it every time these prompts are the most simple prompts I'm thinking of but still even with the URA creates a little bit better prompts than write a short and simple contract for uh, a marketing agency or Facebook advertisement management. So there we go. It's like fill in the blanks, right? F you know, once this is written, you can then tell it to, you could, technically what I could do is at this initial prompt, I could say the company name, I could say the client name, I could say the, the duration, the cost, um, any specific points that you want in that contract. And again, it will create that as well. So 
really focus your energy on what it that what it takes to create this sort of content like previously even a year ago this would have been near impossible to automate this would have been near impossible to not have a third party involved unless you are very good at writing contracts yourself but now this is enabling anyone to have access to you know effectively virtual lawyers of course take this all with a pinch of salt you know you have to do your own dd but it has just opened the doors for so so many people so let's get on to point number what are we one two three four five six six one one two three four no let's get on point number five point number five or well tart tip number five or task number five, whatever you want to call it, let's run with this. And this is quite a unique one, quite a funny one, I guess, but you could have this as an agony aunt. You could have this as your life coach um, and you could just have life advice from it. So let's say uh, I, I want it to be a life coach. You are a life coach. Share some useful advice on how to, uh, how to deal with stress. All right, very common, of course. Let's see what happens. This can be your life coach. This can be your agony aunt. But most importantly, what I think this is enabling people to do is opposed to Google when you are going on Google and you're searching for other content, you're trying to make something fit into what's going on in your world, you can give this very detailed descriptions of what is going on in your world what you might be struggling with and it will relay and reply with that specific example that you've given it so obviously I've just said share some useful advice on how to deal with stress but if you were going through a situation perhaps at work in your personal life you know running a business whatever that situation is and you give this details of that situation this reply would be specific to that and I would hedge my bets that it's it would be pretty good. So point number five, life coach, agony aunt and utilize this for, I guess, advice really. You know, let's, let's really focus this down and let's say it's for advice. Right, so number six, lucky, um, lucky number six. And this is something that I use regularly to help me create content and most important, not create content, sorry, create emails, draft outreach. But for this example, I want to show you is how you can use ChatGPT to tr craft emails for outreach or even for responses. Again, you know, I'm a lot of my language is about for business owners, but don't get me wrong. If you're working in a, in, a, in a company, you're running a lot of emails, you can get this to summarize those emails and also write replies to those emails. So if you copied and pasted an email in here and asked to write a reply in a certain tone, it will perform that extremely well. But also, what if you've got a slightly uncomfortable email to write? You can be getting it to craft that. But for me, I'm gonna write, get it to write a cold email. And again, I'm gonna say, you are an expert email copywriter. Write a single email, uh, no, write a cold email outreach for someone selling Google ad services. Make it short and professional. Okay, so again, this will save you a lot of time. For me personally, I don't use this to write the initial emails. What I tend to do is I will create emails, I'll, I'll, cop I'll write them myself, and then I will use this to maybe create variants, or um, I can even put the email in here and say like, how does this sound, how is this read? And it allows you to really just diversify your thought process because with copy and, and writing, you can get very hyper-focused on certain tasks. So 
There you go. It's written a first email. Personally, I wouldn't use this email for cold email just because it's very long. I'd probably shorten this to half. I would get rid of all of this stuff at the bottom. But hey, that's a whole nother video. So let's move on to number seven. Okay, number seven, a new chat. Why not? Because it's always good. Again, with all of these things, you can keep this in the same chat if it's on the same topic. You know, writing better emails, telling it to do better, telling it to uh, re rephrase something. Whatever you think it needs, it can, it can do. So number seven, let's say you are going on holiday, right? Let's say you are going to the middle of, I don't know, Milan. Let's create a little one day itinerary for your holiday. Again, this is amazing. So you are a holiday uh, holiday expert. I'm not sure if that's a thing. Write a one day plan for a trip to Milan. Include times for each activity. Okay, so this is really a an example of obviously a one day trip but imagine you're going on a seven day vacation to a place you have never gone before this will tell you literally hour by hour at the moment what you can be doing on those days again you have to take it with a little pinch of salt it doesn't access live web data so it's it's using historical data so Nothing is sh is guaranteed in terms of things being there, being open or, or changing. So what I would say, it gives you a great idea and, you know, maybe just go for it and, and see if it's there. But also, as always, just make sure you read it and see what see what the, the crack is. So there we go. Listen, I'm going to stop it there. Um, it's crazy. <laughs> 7.30, 8.30, 10, 11, 12.30, 2.00. I mean, by the end of this day, I think you will be exhausted and I would recommend maybe a three day trip to Milan. Okay, so let's get on to number eight and see what's happening. Okay, picture the scene. You're a student and you've got, so let's say you're a math student and you've got a little dilemma. Mm, let's say you need to figure out how to do an equation and you're not quite sure how to do it. Mm. Uh, Obviously, chat GPT can help you on that. So students, I think, is a really interesting case study for this because there's a lot of talk about whether this is a, should be a student should be allowed to use it. Um, you know, people are writing essays with it. I'm on the fence of if someone was going to use chat GPT to help them anyway, they would probably be someone that is a very skilled at using things around them to help them, which in life is an amazing skill to have. And the workplace and how we study and how we implement things will change drastically over the next five to 10 years. I mean, even the last year, it has changed drastically. So for sure, you know, if you're a student, personally, I'd be using this, but let's say um, you are a, you are a, you are a maths genius. Create a, a, a solve, no, let's do this. Solve this maths problem. And I'm just gonna whack a load of numbers in here. So like whoop, times whoop, times whoop. All right, literally I put my fingers on my keyboard and it does it. So. I love how it will even tell you the, like show the, the workings out. Um, so that's a big old number, 95, what's that, trillion? 95 trillion, um, something like that. But again, in, in a real world example, let's say you're, you're struggling to do your taxes, you're, you're, you know, you're trying to work out monthly budgeting. This will help you with all of that. So utilize it and let's move on to the next one. Okay, number eight, and I'm gonna use this one in a way which anyone can be utilizing this. So let's say that you are, I don't know, just anyone that lives in a house or a flat or whatever, and you wanna create a, a little task list. So create a cleaning list 
to make my home tidy. Worst prompt ever. Let's just say that. Living room, dust and wipe all services. So imagine you're someone that struggles with getting tasks done or you need a structure to get, achieve a task. A lot of people have that overwhelmed feeling, especially with cleaning, it's a great example, when you know you need to clean, but you're like, whoa, where do I start? Again, use this to your advantage, right? Use this to enable you to create a, a step-by-step, -step, literally kitchen, wipe down, clean, sweep, empty, wash, clean, take out. It is creating a step-by-step -step guide for you to clean your property. But let's remove cleaning any task it can create this in. So let's stop generating that again. You get the idea. Let's move on to the final one, number 10. Number 10, and one that I think is extremely useful for research and just getting a lay of the land of what's going on. So you can get this to analyze um, sort of the states of industries. Again, obviously check things. It's not super live data, all that kind of good stuff. But let's just say analyze the current state of the um, housing market within the state of New York. Okay, provide a list of key, uh, no, provide a list of, what should we say? Provide a list of um, key events that has, ha that has happened, have happened, I don't know, again. Analyze the current state of the housing market within the state of New York. Provide a list of key events that has, probably should be have, happened. Um, so again, it will tell you it's not up to date. Last thing is 2021 September. However, it will give an idea of what patterns are happening. So you could say, analyze data from the New York housing market from 2008 to 2012. What a great insight that is from something after 2008, obviously big housing crisis and crash to those next few years afterwards. Giving educational guesses of what may happen if you know that situation happened again. Obviously there's a lot of things happening at the moment with stuff with financial and housing markets anyway. And allowing you to create information and receive information. Again, you don't have to do anything with this. You can just be educating yourself and learning and teaching yourself effectively in your own home, at your own pace, in a way that you're going to understand. So, you know, if you if you like to receive information in a certain manner or a certain tone, you can tell this too. Um, but those are 10 ways that you can use ChatGPT in an everyday, in an everyday setting. I wanted to make this video to try and just kind of like give a massive overview of the potential of ChatGPT. I know it's been around for a couple of months now, but I still see a lot of videos focusing on like how to make a thousand dollars, how to do this, how to do that. And for the everyday person may still be feeling super overwhelmed with this. So hopefully this has given you more ideas to use it. I'll be doing more videos on how to, you know, use open AI, AIPI links, all that good stuff in the future but let me know what videos you want as well thank you so much for watching and i shall see you next time